And now for something a little different, uh, but just a little different, because this is the intersection of uh, wireless and emergency responding and sort of the traditional RTC kind of stuff. Uh, this is a work in progress. So when you ask me, well, how well does it, it we're getting there. Some of you know I've been a little bit busy lately not doing research. Uh, so I do have to do the usual disclaimer. This is not the opinion nor the policy of the FCC. Uh, I may happen to be at the FCC, and Ken Carlberg may happen to be at the FCC, but uh, uh, notice the affiliations. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. So to get your get your graduate stuff here. It's great. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, you know a little bit of what the problem is, how we're addressing it, why it's a problem, and and uh, what we're planning on doing. So you know, there's busy hour. You know, we've done telecommunications engineering, and then there's who knows what this is. I'll give you a hint. You're seeing a lot of pink hats. Yeah, this was the uh, uh, Women's March. Uh, I think I was probably because uh, this was this was the well, it was still Constitution Avenue, but it was a lot closer. I mean, I was probably about way out here. Uh, so a lot of people, and yes, the. Uh, communications industry said, hey, it's the inauguration. We're going to put a whole bunch of mobile cell towers to be able to deal with crowds, except this wasn't on the mall. This was on Independence Avenue a few blocks away from the mall. So you can imagine cell systems were, were totally swamped. Uh, this one? Anyone know what that one is? That was the uh, Boston Marathon, marathon bombing. So at the finish line, all of a sudden, everyone's calling 911. This one is a little bit of local to DC imagery. So that's obviously DC. But uh, this was, I think, uh, 2011. Does anyone like was in DC in 2011 and remember what happened? So we had an earthquake. That's where the cathedral, you know, the top of the cathedral fell and all that. Uh, and again, everybody out on the street all at once. It's a flash crowd. Uh, and especially as we're talking about first responders, we're talking about calls to 911. Uh, these are the times you expect a lot of people to want to make a call all at the same time. Uh, and the problem is with the current communication protocols, the uh, user elements, basically the phones can't like even log into the network to say, hey, I want to make a 911 call. Uh, I hate to say this, but there's still some PSTN thing. Here we are 12 years into IPTCOM and we still have telephone networks that think, well, it's a really dumb edge and a really smart core. Uh, so there's, and by the way, yes, there's the other ARP. As I was getting into 5, 4G and 5G wireless, ARP, I know what ARP is. Oh, that's not, that's not my ARP. Uh, so this is allocation and retention priority. So the good news is if you get on the network and it's a priority call or you are a priority caller, so uh, there's a service called wireless priority service. It's when the general is out at a conference, the missiles start flying or the troops start moving, they have to be able to make and receive calls. So they get priority. And so we do have this concept is once they get onto the network, once you know their phone authenticates to the network, then they have priority, but they still have to get onto uh, the network. Uh, and of course, what this ignores is as you're getting onto the network, you're just any old user. Even if you want to make a 911 call, 
even if you uh, are a priority user. I mean, once you're in, then it's cool. You can preempt people and all that, but uh, not cool before you get in. Uh, so I mentioned wireless priority service. Uh, the idea, since we are moving into finally, you know, I said there's still some PSTN think, but hey, we've got this IP packet switch network, and again, the reality of it working almost all the time is a lot better than it's guaranteed to work none of the time. I mean, supposedly, Bell system guarantees. Uh, and so we uh, established these 16, we call them access classes. Uh, and basically, normal users, when, when you pick up your phone and you make a, a call, you'll randomly, you're basically the phone will randomly pick a value between zero and nine. And so that deals with like people saying, oh look, I'm at the women's march, right? As opposed to help the person next to me just had a heart attack. One of those calls has to go through, the other call kind of should. And by the way, if everyone's taking pictures, you see kind of randomly pick who gets to go, which is, you know, it's a fairness kind of, of algorithm. But then when you get to those access classes 10 to 15, those are the calls that need to go through. Uh, unfortunately, your 911 call is 10, because yeah, they still expect the general to get through before the 911 call. Uh, and oh, by the way, 10 will try and try and try again, whereas like 14, it's supposed to always uh, get in. Uh, you may have heard, and we've talked about this over the years, FirstNet, which in the United States, you know, public safety network, uh, pretty much all the devices come in trying to be in 14, but they'll fall back, you know, well, so, you know, on the FirstNet, but then they'll fall back to the public network, but again, have that higher access class. A, a great way of doing uh, Spectrum sharing, by the way, instead of allocating all that bandwidth to public safety all the time when it's not being used, you know, regular people can use it. You know, it's an efficient allocation of resources, but then when bad things happen, that public safety need can, can still use that bandwidth. Uh, so, you know, we have to do something new when we we're researchers. So, you know, like we just said, oh yeah, we know how to do logging and all that, let's do the blockchain thing because it's got these properties. So yeah, we kind of know how to do priority. Let's talk about 5G. So 5G has this concept of network slicing. Uh, this idea that I can share and use uh, uh, infrastructure. So like one, one base example that was like the first net example I just gave that, you know, we're sharing the infrastructure, but that's at a very granular level. I'm either on the first net network or I'm on T-Mobile or Sprint or AT&T that happens to, to get some priority. Uh, and there, you know, in 5G, we can now split things like have people share actual spectrum, they can share base stations, they can share uh, uh, at, the, at the network layer, you know, so we can actually have like in a rural area, uh, AT&T and Verizon can actually share a tower. The way it's done today is they share a tower and they both put antennas on it. Well now we, and they have to have different spectrum, now we can basically create a virtual, uh, you know, it's just like we've been talking about this for 12, well, 20 years. We're actually doing it now, finally. Uh, and then all the way up to the service layer. And again, the you know, vision there was, well, obviously you would use an AT&T customer would use AT&T's CSCFs, a T-Mobile customer would T-Mobile CSCFs. And oh, by the way, we can even you know, make it easy for virtual network operators to then all the way down share all of this infrastructure. Um, and engineers being engineers went, oh, well, what would people want to do this slicing for? you know, create this virtual network. And I know what we're gonna create it for. 
we're going to create it for different types of media. Because we know real-time interactive video has high bandwidth, modest latency, uh, and OK jitter requirements. Real-time voice, low bandwidth, but very tight latency and jitter requirements. So we'll create these slices so that, you know, and then we'll do access control, you know, the marriage of the best or worst of the PSTN to the IP network that, you know, we'll guarantee the bandwidth for like that voice call so it's got, you know, really good quality. Uh, and so the, basically the, what's standardized in 3GPP are uh, what you'll see here, MTC, which is machine type communication, which is yet another way of saying Internet of Things. Uh, critical MTC, so that's ultra low latency, and that's where you start thinking of autonomous vehicles, things like that, where again, it's Internet of Things, but the message has got to get through, and it's got to get through in really low latency. Uh, massive MTC, this is all of your temperature sensors and homes and all that. Uh, not so important it gets through, but there are gazillions of them. And in a sense, that, that slice is almost to keep them off of the other slices. Uh, and then MBB, mobile broadband, because, man, we're going to get our YouTube really fast. Uh, Again, the key issue here is that these service slices are built around the service. Uh, so, for example, uh, you may have heard of the term V to X, so vehicle to, to the infrastructure. Uh, that's great, but there's no distinction between I'm ordering a pizza and going to pick it up and a first responder uh, trying to get a notice to you, hey, there, I mean, this is huge from the public safety community. There's an accident on the side of the road. The first responder is out there. Please tell the cars around so they don't hit the first responders. I mean, this, David, didn't it just happen like last week a first responder got hit in Maryland, I think? Yeah, you know, and that's like uh, less than ideal when the rescuer needs rescuing. Uh, so the other bit about this is these things are kind of set up beforehand. They're not dynamic. I subscribe to the massive machine-to-machine -machine communications. I subscribe to the video service. So that sounds like uh, I'm almost ready to tell you the problem. Last bit, so this is just, again, more of that. I won't go into this uh, picture too much, but basically it's done up front which, uh, you know, if you remember those pictures of the marathon, the women's march, the earthquake, you don't plan, you don't say, yeah, there's going to be an earthquake tomorrow. Let's set up some slices. Uh, and the IETF, everyone wants a piece of network slicing because it's cool. Uh, working on protocols to allow for how you do this provisioning. So what we uh, feel is that, you know, we can put all of these pieces together and come up with dynamic slicing for first responders. Uh, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to optimize that slice creation uh, and then allow sensing. So, I mean, yes, you could do it. It's like, oh, hey, you know, this march got to be a lot bigger than we did, let's push the button. But in a sense, that's already too late. You know, an earthquake happened, I'll push the button, except my command center has been evacuated. So you want to be able to dynamically detect these situations. Uh, so what our approach is, is to have a threshold of where we notice that these access class 14 handsets have just appeared. So yeah, you know, if you're the general or you're a first responder and you walk through a cell site, that's like normal. But if all of a sudden there are 20 in a sector all at once, there's probably, you know, we can infer that there's something going on. Uh, and to use that to create or expand a first responder slice. 
uh, and that it's dynamic. You know, as they leave, we can again free it up. Because again, the optimal use of the, the spectrum, because after the event happens, yeah, people will probably be taking pictures. You know, nothing to see here. Oh no, I'm gonna put that on Twitter, right? We don't wanna block people from doing that, but we don't want that to block the first responder. Uh, as we're talking about first responders, though, there are a couple of uh, uh, security issues. Uh, one thing is we can't totally rely on, you know, the packet says I'm a first responder, trust me. Uh, so this is a thing, this is again into our work of work in progress. You know, since right now pretty much anyone can kind of say if you can get at the firmware of your phone, you can say your access class 14 looking at ways of how to defeat that, because that would be an obvious you know, like terrorist kind of thing. Saturate the network with priority people, set off a bomb, and then the real priority people can't get on because the network thinks they're already there. Uh, we do uh, show how easy it is to uh, basically find out to, to see what a first responder looks like and then be a first responder. That's uh, about uh, $2,500 of uh, eBay uh, sitting on uh, that uh, seat there of a software defined radio. Uh, so it doesn't take much. And, and of course those, those prices are, uh, are coming down. So that was some of our prior work. So uh, you'll be shocked to hear we're not planning on uh, building this and setting off a bomb to see what happens. Uh, our next step, so this is the work in progress part, is to simulate uh, both the protocols for doing the dynamic slicing, but also to work on the algorithms, because we have uh, some moving average hysteresis hypotheses that will work for this, but we want to actually uh, try it out um, the principal mode here we were, you know, going first on was VoIP, but again, one of the motivations is a first responder takes a picture or takes a video. We don't want that to be classified as YouTube. We want that to be uh, first responder level. Uh, and then, of course, feed stuff back to the community. So with that, um, I'm perfectly done. And no time for, or if 